What's up? Jay Cohen here, Locomotion Fitness in Charleston, South Carolina. We have been talking about the five part gym audit and this is week five, our final piece. So we've gone through client journey, operations, facilities, marketing, and now our fifth and final piece where the rubber meets the road, where we say pay me sales. This is an often overlooked piece from gym owners. Everybody wants to do paid marketing and get people in the door. I'm here to tell you most of the time, what you really need to be working on is your ability to have a conversation with another human, express to them your vision, your passion, make them buy in, and then it's not even asking for a sale, it's take my money. So let's talk about how we need to set that up. So just like we started marketing with metrics, I wanna talk sales metrics first as well, because knowing your metrics is how you're gonna know what is going on with your sales process and where you might have leaks that we can try and plug. So again, we need to make sure we know our set, our show, and our close rates, because we need to know, is it a problem getting leads? Is it a problem nurturing leads and actually having them show up for their appointment? Or do we have a true sales problem? Those first two numbers, the set and show rate, can really drastically be improved if you have someone doing lead nurture. So this is just hiring someone that when someone opts in and gives you their information, we need to be reaching out to them quickly. When somebody is ready to make a purchase decision, they're not ready forever. So we need to capitalize on their mindset of, hmm, I really think now is the time to join a gym. Believe it or not, if you wait even one hour, that is more than likely too long. And they may have already moved on to buying a ping pong table. So having someone do lead nurture as soon as you collect a lead so that you can get them to book an appointment, that is suggestion number one. Number two, and that will help your set rate. For your show rate, we need to make sure that we have somebody who is following, following up with people that have booked appointments leading up to the appointment. So yes, this can be automated and parts of it should be automated. Reminder texts and emails so that people actually come in. However, shooting a quick video with the person's name of you talking and saying, hey, so-and-so, I can't wait to see you at my gym at this time. I am gonna be able to learn a ton about you, put together a plan to help you out, and you are gonna absolutely love it. Imagine the mindset that that person is going to have coming into your sales appointments. You've already primed them to be more successful once they actually get into your business. Not only that, but it's gonna make more people show up, which is of course going to improve your show rate, give you more at-bats for the actual sale, and, and of course, that translates then to more sales. Next up, let's talk about sales spaces. They should be pretty. I'm in one of our sales spaces right now. You can look behind me. I've got a couple of chairs back there, a nice, clean, organized desk. My door is shut. We are private. This room is just getting set up. This is one of three sales or consultative spaces that we have. This is actually primary, primarily our nutrition office. So we're doing nutrition sales appointments and really just nutrition appointments in here. Um, we've also got a, a main area where we've got the in-body and do a lot of our athlete check-ins and just sort of normal free intros. And we've got a third area that is blocked off with curtains out on the main gym floor so that just in case the other two offices are full and we have somebody that walks in, for example, we've got another private space. I keep saying it needs to be private. We are expecting people to, to tell us what is going on in their lives and with their health. And if it's not private in a place that they feel safe and comfortable, they're just gonna give you that surface answer. I wanna look good, I wanna feel better. The problem with that is that's not what's emotionally driving their decision to come and see you. And part of sales is figuring out that emotional driver because if you can touch that button, that is what in their mind is creating a burning desire to make a change. So you need this private space so that you can get to that level. You can get to that place where they feel comfortable, take a deep breath and tell you what is actually going on between their ears. Another quick pro tip when talking about sales, 
prime the environment. So again, we're just getting this room set up, but once it's ready to rock, you better believe there's gonna be success stories all around this room. We're gonna be anchoring prices. We're going to be letting people walk in and subconsciously seeing what is possible and what um, they're going to be able to do with us. And just that little bit of priming the environment makes a purchase decision so much more likely. It gets your job so much easier before you even start. So as you're setting up your sales space or spaces, that is something to think about. Make sure it's set up in a way that encourages a purchase decision. Don't have a skull and crossbones behind you. Have that 100 pound weight loss story or whoever your ideal client is show them around you, show their successes, show their wins, show the person who's walking into your space what's possible. All right, so the next piece of advice I have for you is setting up a sales binder. So in this binder, we have a bunch of different memberships and I will show you each of them. Um, very important when you're setting up your sales binder pages, no more than two to three options per page. And you would never, ever, ever just give this to the person to flip through, right? That is way too many options. We only want two or three options for the person to choose from. So if this is somebody who you think is going to do personal training, present them your personal training packages. So it's 16 times a month, 12 times a month, eight times a month anchor them with that 16 times price. So, you know, throw out a big number. Um, and then you can always drop down if needed and it's gonna seem a lot more affordable if you do it that way. Use the option close. So one of the great things about having, you know, three, two or three options of a page is not do you wanna do this and, and show them the binder, but it's would you rather do A or B? And then you don't give them a no option. You give them an A or a B option. So this sales binder just gives visual people uh, a better understanding of what you're trying to give them and people that are sort of scattered and not sure what they want to do. It really helps to focus them and make the choice much easier. One of the things that causes inaction is overwhelm. So if we can eliminate that overwhelm and say, forget about everything else, A or B, someone is going to be a lot more likely to make that call. All right, the last thing I wanna to talk to you about is sales training and sales mindset. And we'll start with the sales mindset. I do not want to feel like a slimy car salesman. I know you don't want to feel like a slimy car salesman. We did not get in the gym business to sell people crap that they didn't need. We got in this industry to change lives for the better. And I like to think we're doing it for the right reasons. So how can we make sure that we're able to feed our family, support our staff, have an amazing gym for our community and not feel like a slimy salesperson? And the answer to that is relatively simple. And it's to give people what they need, to sell people what you know is going to help them. If you know you have an amazing product that is going to change somebody's life, there is no reason to feel slimy about saying what you have to say to get them to pull the trigger. Now, I'm not saying lie. I'm not saying bait and switch. I am saying learn how to sell so that you feel comfortable, confident, and able to have these one-on-one -on -one conversations where you can connect on an emotional level. And that's where sales training comes into play. And Two Brain does an incredible job providing sales training. We've got my counterpart here on YouTube, Jeff B, who does a ton of videos on sales. We had Chris Voss come, the author of Never Split the Difference. And if there is one book that I could recommend on the nuts and bolts of how to sell, it is Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss, who came and spoke at Two Brain Summit last year and gave us this amazing knowledge on how to connect with people and how to have these oxytocin moments where somebody bonds to you and feels like they know, like, and trust you and are willing to spend money with you. Um, another really great one is Daniel Pink, To Sell is Human. So if you're somebody who struggles with that car salesman mindset, check out To Sell is Human with Daniel Pink. 
And then the last thing upcoming very soon, we've got Joe Marco with Two Brain, who is coming to do a full day seminar for the gym owner and whoever is their head of sales or, or just two people from your team. Uh, to come and get some top of the line, best in class sales training. All right, that's the end of our two brain five part gym audit. Go through all of those pieces, revamp your business, restart your marketing, crush those sales, and let's get your gym full and cranking. Uh, we will be back next week with uh, something awesome.